What's up guys, this is Tampa Tech and today I am going to be working on a Samsung TV. This was sent to me by acquaintance and this TV has no power. The model number is T220HD and it's a 2008 LCD TV. Is it worth it to fix? Mm -hmm. I don't know. This TV is really old, it's 11 years old and it's small and inexpensive to buy but I'm gonna go ahead and try to fix it for free for him all right so let's spin it around in the back and you notice there's no screws in the back how do you open it <laughs> this TV is a pain to open it's not fun all right so you have to face it upwards this one it's kind of like a monitor if you ever worked on an LCD monitor you have to unclip them and they're fragile, so you have to be careful. And what you do is you can either grab your hands on the side right here and pry up, which I don't like to do because the screen is fragile. Or you could take it like this and look for a gap. And I have this tool. It's always good to have some kind of good tools to use to pry with. In the corner. I always work from the corner. I'm gonna zoom in to show you. So I got this tool and I'm gonna slide it in right here but you got to be careful because there's sometimes a ribbon cable connections you get damage and then this tool it's a plastic tool to work on phone screens. You get this on Amazon or eBay and I just slide this down and across. And if you hear a pop, don't worry, it's just the clips. There we go. It's kind of nerve-wracking a little bit because if you, it sounds like you're breaking it. I'm going to use my brand new desoldering station. See how that works out. Set it to 400 Fahrenheit. Actually, I'll probably raise that. You got to make sure that you have this in place. I'm going to show you what it is. It's a gasket right here. It's like a rubber seal. And the filter is right here. I don't know if you can see it. There's the filter and there's a rubber gasket in here. It's a rubber ring. Make sure you have that in there before you do anything or else it's not going to suck. So I'm going to take the capacitors out of circuit so I can test them. And these are a thousand microfarads. They usually go bad. Uh, 
any other capacitors? Let me see. Oh man, actually, <laughs> there's actually this one's definitely bad. You can see it's it's bulged. If it's swollen like that, that means it's bad. So that is definitely bad. And that one is rated 20. 220 microfarads and if I have these I'll probably replace those too yeah that's definitely bad this one so basically I just hold it there heats up liquefies and then twist it to get the leg moving and then hit the trigger that one just fell out because I liquefied it and it fell out. So you can see that right here there's a bubble on top. It's swollen. This one should read 2,200 microfarads. And let's go ahead and read it right now. This is the negative side. Put my black lead right there. And I am reading nothing so far. It's discharging. 1,000. Yeah, let me show you. So I'm reading 1,200, 1,000. It's jumping around. This is definitely bad. So if it reads like like 15%, less than 15% of its value or 10% of its value, then it's bad. So if it's reading well below the 2,200 microfarads. So it's bad. So I found the capacitors right here. And there are 2200 microfarads, 35 volt. This should work just fine. You can go higher on the voltage, but you can't go higher on um, the value. Well, in the power supply, you, you can go a little bit higher in the, in the power supply, but not any like main logic board. I wouldn't. So the shaded part right here, you wanna put the negative toward that. Slide that in. And I'm going to hit that up with some solder. And I'm going to use my new soldering station. Heats up really fast. That's what I like about it. Go ahead and check these. And should read a thousand. And it does. And hold it there for a couple seconds. Make sure the value stays the same. So this one is definitely good. Check this one out. This one is definitely good. It's reading over the value, which is fine. And this one is also a thousand microfarads. Oh, it's backwards. And hold it there for a couple seconds just to make sure it's thing thing and it's good also and these are just clipped on to remove them you just press on this and then you pull so this goes to the panel I think this is the for the remote or the IR sensor and then this is for the speakers this plug <clears throat> and this is for the inverter board no this is for the TCOM board so if you don't get a picture that's probably why go ahead and put this back on
Let's see if it turns on. Is it plugged in? Yeah, it's plugged in. I can't even find the power button. There, it's lighting up right here. Oh, I heard chime. And we have a picture. Finally, I fixed something. <laughs> no signal. Yeah. Can't even see the power button on this one. Why would I, why would Samsung make a TV with no power button? Where's the power button? So that's how you fix this TV. Give me a big thumbs up if this video was informative. And if you're interested in any of these tools, check out the links in the video description below. And if you know anyone that this video will help, go ahead and click on the share button below and share this video to them. Help someone out. And if you want more tech videos like this coming your way, subscribe and hit that bell notification to stay updated on the latest videos. Thanks guys for watching.